Hi friends, sitting here at my dining room table in Ajijic, Jalisco, Mexico, doing a little sound test to see what kind of an echo you are getting. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. Well, it's Thursday night, about 9.30 at night. That would be September 10th. And uh, I'm supposed to have a video for you tomorrow on Friday morning. And I don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> but life's just kind of gotten in the way this week. So what's been going on? Well, nothing really terrible. Uh, I had a couple of dental appointments, one of them just uh, routine cleaning. They do a great job here. And, you know, I used to hate to get my teeth cleaned because they had those metal sharp instruments. They pick around and make your gums bleed and they're poking and prodding. And if there happened to be a cavity or a decay somewhere, they're going to poke that metal thing right in there and it's going to hurt. They don't do that here. I don't know exactly what it is. It's water and ultrasound and it's comfortable and it tickles and makes your nose itch, <laughs> but it doesn't hurt. And your teeth feel really good when they get done. And the cost of that is like, I think it was 350 pesos, which is by the current exchange rates from US dollars to Mexican pesos or vice versa, about, what's that? 17, 18 US dollars to get your teeth cleaned. And um, in the process of doing that, uh, I asked him about something was going on with one of my teeth. And it's this tooth right there, that one. Let me give you the history of that tooth. Uh, what was going on was that my tongue kept feeling a rough spot in the back and I just couldn't keep my tongue from exploring it. So I asked him to take a look at it and see what we could do about that or what was going on. The, the beginning of that tooth is like almost 50 years ago. I was, I think I was 26 years old and I was eating a piece of jerky and I broke that tooth off totally at the gum line. And I was in Los Angeles and I had a, um, I just noticed that if I tap the dining room table, you get a little bounce. Hmm. Anyway, uh, that uh, I had a relative, shirt tail relative in LA who was a dentist and he took me in in the evening and um, the office was closed, but he and the nurse worked on me and they did a root canal and they pounded a little post up into the root canal and attached this tooth and it's metal um, with ceramic around it. And I'm not a dentist, I don't know what you call that, if it's a metal jacketed ceramic tooth or what, but that's what it is. And like I said, that was 50, almost 50 years ago. And what was going on this week is that it had a little hole worn into the metal in the back of it. So I'm pretty sure that if I were in the United States, they would want to yank that out of there and repost it or, you know, pull the rest of the roots and give me an implant or whatever. I'm sure it would have been somewhere between $1,000 and $2,000 in the United States of America. Uh, he said, my dentist here, he said, well, we can replace that, but um, there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with it. So he took an x-ray and he said, that tooth is really solid. And I told him that the dentist that put it in 50 years ago told me that that was a really good tooth and that when I died and the rest of my body turned to dust, that that tooth would be just as shiny as it was that day, laying there in the pile of dust. <laughs> well, anyway, he said, well, we could fill it. And it sounds a little strange to get a filling in a tooth that's not a real tooth, but 
he said, let's try that and see, what, see how it goes. Well, that's what he did. And it's several days later now, and it seems to have gone very, very well. And he opened it up a little farther in the back there and, and uh, decided there was no decay in whatever is really part of me underneath there. So he filled it, and it's all nice and smooth in the back. And he charged me like 400 and some pesos, which is 20, 25 US dollars. As opposed to what I'm sure would have been um, 1,000 to 2,000 dollars in the United States. So just um, part of the pleasure of living in Mexico. Well, um, what else was going on? Another excuse for not having a video for you today, um, or tomorrow morning, Friday. I spent way too much time this week looking at YouTube instead of making YouTube. Uh, most of it shopping for um, that Jeep Liberty I was talking about in my last video. And learning what I could learn about uh, off-roading and what's good and what's bad and what to look for if you buy one of those and what you should avoid if you buy one of those and why you should or why you shouldn't buy one of those. And thank you for all of the advice I got on my last video in the comments for people who told me not to buy one and for all of those people who told me they have one and they really like it. Um, I'm sure that uh, all of those kinds of comments uh, say more about uh, the opinion of the commenter than they do about the subject matter. But that's, that's another thing we've talked about before, that comments always define the writer of the comment, not the subject of the comment. Me being the subject when it's bad. <laughs> anyway, never mind that. Um, I'm trying to be educated about off-roading and what are the pitfalls of off-roading and how do you get stuck and how much different kinds of vehicles will, um, uh, what are the capabilities of different kinds of vehicles. Anyway, to make a long story short, uh, good news is <clears throat> I'm going to quit shopping for a Jeep Liberty uh, because I bought one and I don't want to keep shopping and find out that I could have gotten a better deal. <laughs> so uh, it's in Dallas, Texas, and I'm going to fly up there uh, next month and um, take delivery of it and drive it to Arizona. And it seems like uh, maybe kind of adventurous to go and uh, have purchased and take delivery of a vehicle you've never actually seen. Um, and uh, get in it and plan to drive a thousand miles. But I have a backup plan. And the backup plan is that if it doesn't make it that thousand miles, it's already set up to tow, which is one of the reasons that I uh, pulled the plug on it. Uh, pulled the trigger, I just pulled the trigger. I think that's the expression. It's one of the reasons I pulled the trigger on it and bought it, is because it's already set up to tow, which is $1,500 worth of parts if I did it myself and 2000 to 2500 if I had somebody else set it up that way to tow. So anyway, that was part of its advantage to me. If it doesn't make it all the way to Arizona to where I will hook it on the back of my motorhome as a tow car, towed, uh, I'll just rent a car, park it, rent a car, and drive on to Arizona and get my motorhome and come back and hook it on the back of the motorhome and take it to my uh, mechanic. I was talking to my brother um, a few days ago about this and he said, you know, you're crazy to buy a, to buy a used vehicle uh, and it's got pretty high mileage on it and I'm not paying a lot of money for it. It's not a lot of money that I'm going to have to live in the poor house if I park it in the ditch and abandon it. But my brother says, you know, you're crazy to buy a something you've never actually seen or test driven and think you're going to get in it and go a thousand miles. Um, 
So anyway, that's when we came up with the plan. Well, okay, so I could just go get the motor home and pull it. And the deal is I have a collection of mechanics. I have a mechanic in Quartzsite, Arizona. I have a mechanic in Rapid City, South Dakota. And I have a mechanic in uh, Gresham, Oregon. And I also have a mechanic in uh, uh, Ajijic, Mexico. So I've got mechanics in three states and uh, two countries. And what I mean to say by that is that I have mechanics that I trust and don't rip me off. I'm, I'm afraid of mechanics, lawyers, and doctors in the United States more than I am of anything in Mexico. They have uh, great powers to hurt me financially. <laughs> So anyway, I have a mechanic in Quartzsite that I have had work on the Suzuki. He put, a new, put in a new uh, chime, timing chain for me last January. And uh, subsequently, um, a friend of mine had a problem with his, and then another friend bought a, another vehicle. And anyway, I've been privy to this guy working on three different vehicles, and uh, what he charged me was really, really, really fair. And talking to him and seeing the shop and having gotten to know some of his experience, I'm fully confident that I could get it fixed uh, fairly. <laughs> so anyway, it's a used vehicle, and you're always taking a chance when you buy a used vehicle, even if you think you know something about used vehicles and you inspect it yourself or even if you go and have it inspected. So it is what it is. Heard that on TV somewhere last week. Never mind. Well, so anyway, here's a picture of the Jeep Liberty I bought. And um, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to fly up there and to Dallas next month and take possession and drive it to Arizona. But all of that time I've spent online learning what I need to know to be confident in this decision uh, has left me with no time making a video while I'm spending too much time watching videos. I'm going to fill in the rest of this video with some... Um, I, I started out this week, I was going to make a video about creepy crawlers in Mexico. Because... I know you guys want to know about living in Mexico, and um, I always like to talk very nicely about it, but hey, there's some things here that can sometimes gross people out, so um, I had a guest swimming in the pool this week, and I grabbed my camera, so let me show you what happened. He's a really good swimmer, isn't he? And I think he's cute. Lynn doesn't think rats are cute, but I'm not bothered by rats. I don't like mice. Mostly I don't like mice because I think uh, they chew up the wires in my cars, but I don't think rats do that. I just, uh, I feel really bad for him because he can't get out is the deal. I've had, um, I've had a German Shepherd in my pool that couldn't get out. I've had a Datsun. No, not a Datsun. That's a little wiener dog. What do you call it? A beagle. Bagel. Beagle. Bagel. You eat bagels. A beagle. A beagle. A really big fat beagle in my pool that couldn't get out. Look at that. He's hiding in the, he's hiding in the pool skimmer. Well, that's good because it means he has a place to rest. He hasn't had to just be swimming all the time. That's good. I had a, uh, I had a uh, baby possum swimming in my pool that I grabbed one day, and he would. He, I don't know how long he'd been in there, but I could see his heart beating. He was so exhausted, and I picked him up and looked at him. Anyway, so I, I went and got this um, old pool noodle that's been 
laying over there in the dirt behind the bushes, thinking I'd give him a way to crawl out, but he was having none of that. So I'm going to get the net. And he's gone back into the skimmer. I'm sure you're really impressed with my camera work as I'm dealing with rats, nets. I should just edit this out. So I'm going to go and dump him over the wall so he can go live out there in the federal zone. I'm sure the horse will welcome some... Co oh, he jumped out. He jumped out of the net. Hey, little guy. Jump down. Where are you going? Ah. Who could say he's not cute? Adios. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.